Okay, just to put this in a little bit of context, this, this whole series is looking at state power. Um, it, it was actually um, planned before the um, current um, crisis, if you like, the, the, the COVID-19 outbreak, which obviously poses a lot of quite interesting questions about state power. Um, and at the end of this, this series, we've actually got a, a session um, about that. So in this session about the state in general, um, I'm going to talk about basically the Marxist theory of, of, of the state. And I'm not going to try and relate it to anything that's going on now. Now, I suspect that might come up, come up in, in discussion, and that's fine. Um, but, but I'm not going to address it. I'm going to talk about, you know, the basics of a Marxist theory of, 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 of the state. Um, and sessions that follow were also quite general about the police, prisons and drugs, if I recall. Um, my post-it notes are falling off. Um, I'm going to try and keep this quite short because um, I actually can't read a Zoom meeting and I can't tell if I'm boring people, which is actually much more possible in a uh, room. So I'm going to try and err on the side of being relatively short, uh, try and give a bit of structure, not really go into things in too much detail. And But that really throws it back to you guys to kind of bring up points in, in discussion if things aren't clear if you want you know to discuss things and kick thing, things around to um to uh, do that because if i talk for you know just 15 minutes then nobody says anything it'll be a very short meeting um okay so what i'm going to do is um just make a, a few i think oh really about seven or eight points um just going through the basics of the Marxist, Marxist theory of, of the state. I think it's probably good to start with the idea of, of, of what the state is. Um, now, obviously, at the top of the state, you, 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 you've got the cabinet, the, the prime minister, the government, you've got those departments, you know, yeah, Department of Health and Communities, whatever it's called now. Um, health and care, that's right. Um, you know, so you've got all of that so slightly to one side. You've got Parliament, which may or may not be part of the state, depending on how you look at it. But then going on down, you've, you've, you've got, you know, the education system, uh, the, the, the health of National Health Service. Things are actually quite, quite in favour of, but they're nonetheless part of the state. Um, they're not the kind of health service and education system that we as socialists would, would want, you know. So it's fixed to the health system is in, in some part, at least fixing up people to go back to work. It's got a hierarchical structure, which itself is very class bound. The education system, much more so, is clearly educating people to go and work. But, you know, within those bounds, we, we're in favour of people being able to read, write, and do sums. Yes, you know, not entirely a bad thing. It isn't simply or even capitalist in, in, in indoctrination. Um, you, um, then much more obviously you've got the classical parts of the state, you've got the police, you've got the armed forces, you've got a court system, you've got prisons, um, arguably you've got things like, like the BBC, you've got one or two bits of the economy which are still state owned. The, the state has quite a big economic role, that's at the moment, I won't go into that. Um, you've got local governments which is also part of the state and the things the local government does which is increasing small amount but most notably social services, and, and yeah, and you, and you could go on. The state does quite quite a lot. State spending in Britain now is, I think, they're just a bit, sh well, now, state spending last year was just shy of 40% uh, of GDP. Uh, so, so basically, 40% of, of all the activity that's, that happens in Britain now is state activity. The state is a large thing. It's not a small thing. It's, it's not... It, it's not just a few people with guns, I mean, although at times I'll treat it like it is probably. Um, okay, so, um, so, so the first thing I want to start with is, is what centrally the state is. And this is where I'm going to come and be very simplistic and say it's people with guns. Um, at heart, if you strip everything else away, the thing that makes the state the state is that it's a force. Yeah? It's an authority. It is a source of enforced order yeah um the the first thing or one of the first things that the state was was it was it was bodies of armed men and they i think almost all places were men um yeah it was it was a police force it was a system of of, of law um of <laughs> eventually of 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 prisons 
the, the, the state, if you strip everything else away, is a force that imposes order on society. And that's what it is if, if everything else is stripped away. Now, actually, Marxism isn't alone in thinking that. Probably the first modern, I mean, after 1500, political theory of the state was Thomas Hobbes, who's a kind of conservative. Um, and his, his book on state was called The Leviathan, which is, um, I, th I think technically it's a sea monster. It's a big force. Yeah? It's something that scares people, right? And um, Tom, Tom, Thomas Hobbes, absolutely historically incorrectly, um, said that before the state, yeah, people were brutal. He said a lot, la life was nasty, lonely, brutish and short. And the state was any force that makes people behave themselves. Um, now he's actually wrong. Um, I'll mention it. I'll mention it in a while. Um, uh, Frederick Engels, um, Marx's lifelong collaborator, wrote a book, 1884, called *The Origins of Family, Private Property, and the State*. And it actually stands up quite, quite, quite well. And one of the things he, he looks at is actually that the state emerges only when systematic conflict in society emerges. Prior to that, there isn't a state. Hobbes actually got, has got things entirely upside down. It, it's actually, it's actually. The, the, the state is, is, is a reaction to a new social order in society, which has got conflict in it, but I'll come back to that very, very soon. Um, so the Marx, I mean, Max Weber too, who's probably the most, outside of Marxist, Marxist theory, is probably the most famous quote on, 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 on the state, said the um, state is that body that claims a um, monopoly of force in a given territory, which actually, Functionally, on the surface of things, is actually pretty much what, what Marx said um, um, and, and Engels. Um, Marx and Engels said there's something underneath that, which Weber didn't. Um, now, so there's a bunch of theory that says oh, the state is, is, is about force. A, a, a lot of more liberal theories don't have this idea at all. So I, I, I used to talk to students. I used to talk to them with, um, with, with this book here. And is anyone, for, anyone familiar with this? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Harold Lambos. So I used to... Yeah, you should remove students' brains and put that book in their place. It's called being Haralam Um, But if you if you go to that and you open it, the first page on, on, on the state, it's got the liberal theories. It says, and it says, ah, oh, the, the, the liberal, it's it's a the state is an honest broker. The state is a force that mediates between different competing forces in societies and comes up with something nice. It's called the liberal pluralist theory of the um, state. And we'll come back to that because that, because that's the way the state wants to be seen. Yeah. Um, you know, somewhat, somewhat like some, some in a Zoom meeting, putting themselves in front of their bookshelves. Uh, yeah, it's, that, that's, that's the way the state wants to present themselves. Um, well, it, itself. Okay, so the core of the state isn't the nice stuff. It's, it's this, this idea, it's a way of imposing order on society. Now, to a certain extent, even if you take the nice stuff, the education system, um, the, the, the health system actually while these aren't policing, these, these aren't services that carry guns, on the whole, um, they're, they're, they're about creating um, a, a system where, well, exploitation, where you know, can, can, can happen smoothly, um, where, well, in the, in the current setup, where capitalism can exploit workers in an efficient way. Um, so that is a kind of capitalist order that the state is imposing. So, but at heart, it's a force, and I think you should never, never forget that about the state. Okay, the, the second point um, is, um, and again, this comes back to Marx and Engels, is the state isn't, well, the, 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 the state emerges in, um, in, in ancient society, so and initially, for example, in ancient Greece, um, at, at the time when class society emerges. Um, Engels, in The Origins of, of a Family, Private Property and the State, um, talks about you know, how you had what you call Gentile society, society made up of, of, of clans, clans forming into tribes and, and, and so on. And, and these basically, they, having no class in them, yeah? Um, every, everybody was doing things, things for themselves, sort of doing things collectively, those forms of primitive communism, those forms of basic commerce. But basically, everybody, the society was quite flat and even. And what emerges out of these societies is, 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 is the beginnings of, of class. And when you get class, you get class conflict. Yeah, class is a, you know, well, the exploiting class want to exploit the exploited class. The exploited class don't like being exploited, right? Conflict, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna happen. 
yeah um and this and while marx and engels don't say the state is the instrument of that exploitation it emerges to basically keep that 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 conflict from, from from happening because the ruling class is necessarily numerically smaller yeah than the exploited class yeah that is in the ruling class's favor the the, the state doesn't actually have to be the ruling class's personal power and in a certain sense the state strives not to be that yeah it strives at least not to appear to to, to be that and sometimes it strives really you know, to have that real distance but because it's protecting that established order yeah it does that it it it, it, it protects the balance of classes which exist in in society it protects the exploiters so the, the earliest states were based on on slave owners this this is the athenian state um keeping slaves down now athens was, was a democracy no it wasn't because the slave owners or male slave owners or actually a proportion of the male slave owners who were richer ones um, had democracy and the slaves didn't now i think well athens was a funny state in a certain sense it looks like the state is solely the the province of the slave owners it is actually their personal property in a quite important sense it is um there's, there's other funny things about it um the slave owners were slightly kind of they didn't want to get their hands dirty by doing things so the police in athens were slaves yeah and an athenian slave owner would rather be arrested by a slave than get their hands dirty doing the job of policing and that's a kind of interesting general point about about policing but also about the state yeah the the, the state tries to appear to be something broader than just the naked power of a ruling class and i think an important sense is that we, we can discuss that okay so that was one form of class society serfdom and and sort of laws that's another one and what i'll mainly assume is it will give a, a, a state under capitalism where the basic conflict is between the working class and the capitalist class okay third point yeah this is a point i've already talked about state the state tries to rise its raise itself above society yeah um if you look at the state um, i've just read an awful book uh, mainly because I was, I was doing this it's, what, do, do, do people come across chris Niner, xswp currently counterfire and throughout this book he writes as as if the state is the personal power of, of a ruling class so whenever the state does something it's the ruling class yeah as if it's a then they are personally sitting there if you if you look at the if you look at the state if you look at the cabinet it's not on the whole full of capitalists yeah it's full of journalists and lawyers yeah um if you look at the civil service it certainly isn't full of capitalists it's, it's 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 full of a, a tier of society b b below capitalists you know i mean not not the bottom there yeah um not not the working class it's full of kind of middle class upper middle class people people kind of pushing it, people who kind of parents scratch together to get them to go to fee paying schools that's the kind of people who become civil servants and and judges not and, and not just the, the the state on the whole isn't run by the you know the 0.01 percent of the people who actually own the bulk of world's world world's economy um it's actually run by layers below that um so the, the the state has this real element in it of being something above that class conf conflict that, that characterizes the, the economy society everything below this political public sphere that the state occupies um and the state has a fantastic trick that goes go, go goes along with this because it's public because it's not about private power yeah the ruling class don't have to pay for it it's paid for through taxes yeah um so yeah because the state is is public we all have to pay for it um okay so important stability done that okay now that doesn't mean that, that the state is not a capitalist state but the state in a very important sense is a capitalist state um and you can put this in a very unnuanced way. Marx and Engels sometimes put it in an unnuanced way. So in the Communist Manifesto, you get the, the line, the, the executive modern state is but a committee for managing the common affairs of a whole bourgeoisie, which makes it sound like it's something, yeah, it actually makes it sound like there's kind of fat capitalists in wakes, waistcoats and top hats sitting, sitting around talking about how they're going to exploit the workers. It's kind of not. Uh, it, it, uh, 
well, if it has been, it hasn't been for, for, for a long time. And actually, the capitalist class have always been kind of, kind of willing to separate themselves off from power. If you look at the British state through certainly the first half of the 19th century, um, when the Industrial Re Re Revolution was happening, basically the, 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 the capitalist class la allowed the, the, the landed aristocracy to run the state for. Yeah. Then there was a big clash in 1842 over the Corn Laws. The bourgeoisie had to assert itself a bit more. Uh, and then you can see, for example, uh, the, 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 yeah, the landed aristocracy functioned by buying themselves things. So up until oh, some things called the Trevelyan Northcote reforms, the civil service in 1872. Um, be, be, before that, you could buy yourself a, pl a place in, in the civil service. And the Trevelyan Northcote reforms um, said you had to be examined to get into the civil service, you have to pass some civil service exams, open it up to that, that middling layer of kind of upper middle class people who had had a kind of a right kind of education. Um, I mean, similarly, um, commissions in the army up until, I, don't, I can't remember when, similar kind of time, had been bought. You know, you, you know, so you say so you're rich, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're idiot child of, of, of landed aristocracy, you become a colonel in, in the army, you just got loads of people killed. Yeah. Um, and so the so the so so the so the state. Um, I've got that on my point now. Yeah, the, the state is a capitalist state. It kind of rules on. It, it kind of it wants a healthy capitalist economy, but it's not necessarily the capitalists sitting there pulling all, all of the strings. They're, they're doing it themselves. Okay. Um, right. I'm getting to the point where I said I was going to shut up. So I think I'll make one more point. Okay. I was going to say something about the good things. Um, but I won't. I'm going to say as my last point, um, one of the key points that, that developed through Marx's life. Um, if, you, if you read Marx's works in order on, on, the, on, on the state very early on, where you see his attitude to, towards, well, sorry, so again, if you look at Marx's works through his life and, and you look at what he says the working class's attitude towards the state should be, early on it's a bit vague. Uh, early on, he, he says, oh, well, the working class need to win the battle for democracy. Uh, he also uses a phrase which I think we should bin, maybe we should talk about this, which is the dictatorship of the proletariat, which I think has been rather ruined by Stalinism. Um, and possibly a bit of in the Marxist movement actually before Stalinism, going back to the 1890s. Um, but he talks about the ruling, the working class rising itself to the level of the ruling class. Doesn't really say what that means in relation to the state. Says some things like in, in, in Britain that, that might just be winning a parliamentary democracy. That might do. Um, then he talks about France, which had a standing army. Britain didn't have a standing army. A big state bureaucracy. Britain didn't, didn't have, have a big, big state bureaucracy. Um, and, and he said something more thoroughgoing is necessary there. Um, and he was a bit vague about what that actually meant. Um, 1871, 1872, 1871, Paris Commune, yeah? um, the, the, the workers took power in, in Paris. And in effect, they abolished the existing state. They insisted that all state em employees who wanted to stay on worked on the average working person's wages, no, working man's wages, let's be accurate, um, and basically elected all of the important posts. Yeah? And in embryo created the first worker state they abolished the old state and they created a, a new state and only, only only with that example did Marx say oh yeah that's it yeah you can't take over the old state yeah you have you have to you have to abolish it um and set up a new state and he then said if that state abolishes classes because a state only exists to hold class class antagonisms apart and and keep that the, the, the top dog class of capitalists, in, in one case, in worker state, the workers in charge. Once the capitalist class is, is abolished, that state will wither away. This is a very difficult position to, to, to anarchists, which were the big debates throughout the 19th and early 20th century. Um, now, one last point. This obviously raises a question of, of what happens when you get an elected government. Um, elected Labour government, a left-wing Labour government, or rather a, a, a Labour government which is actually committed to, to serving the, the, the workers. Um, yeah, if, you, if we get, I mean, if we'd had something a bit better than Corbyn and they'd won an election and the British state still existed, what would they have done? Yeah, uh, because Marx says, no, no, you can't just seize the state and, and, and use it. 
um, Lenin wrote a book in, uh, he, he wrote a book under lockdown um, called, called, called State, wait, the, the State and Revolution. He was, he was in hiding uh, between the February and October 1917 re revolution. So that's good, good use of, of, of lockdown. And he, and he pulls together all of the Marx's bits and bobs on, on, on the state. And the, and the thing which was railing against as much of Marxist movement, to, um, the German Social Democratic Party in particular, basically got a program where so you could seize the state, 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 and use it, and it's, it's saying that. And the idea that you could get an elected workers' government under a capitalist state and what that did and how, how it was limited by, by, by that and what it had to do was quite important. It's the idea of a workers' government. But um, I have now been talking for 20 minutes. So I think with summarising on, on three points. The state, whatever its nice bits, is, is organised force. It's organised force because, the, because, the, because society above which the state tries to appear has class conflict in it. By imposing order on society ensures that one class, so currently the capitalist class, stays on, on top and at times will nakedly use its force to repress the working class, so break strikes and, and so on. Um, the, and the working class can't simply seize hold of that state and use it to implement their program, but have to create their own state. And then I've left that slightly unreconciled question about what happens if a left-wing Labour government or left-wing workers' government uh, can win an election under capitalism. What do, what do they do? I haven't answered that question. You can.